All right, next, uh, Senator Kramer, and then I, my notes here indicate Senator Stapanow, you'd follow Senator Kramer, and Senator Lummis, so I think you're gonna follow Senator Stapanow. So, all right, Senator Kramer, for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, thank you all for being here, uh, witnesses, and I just, I do have to respond a little bit, um, because Senator Whitehouse, I think is wrong, I, actually, I think it is dynamically connected. It's not statically connected, when he talks about price at, 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 that a producer gets paid for producing oil and the price at the pump. It's quite dynamic, but it's not static. In fact, in, in a response to a question by, uh, uh, I think to you, to you, Ms. Skama, um, you referenced the oil export ban being lifted. I, I was, as I watched the markets today, and I see that WTI and Brent are roughly $3 apart, I remember before the ban, they were $30 apart. In other words, the United States has helped bring down the cost of oil globally. As opposed to being a price taker, we've become a price maker. That's good for the world, and that's enhanced um, productivity, and it's, in, it's brought prices down. And frankly, if we do a lot more of it, we could be the price maker uh, yet again. And we have this window of opportunity. Never in my wildest dreams uh, uh, Congressman Matheson, in my wildest dreams, when I would see my dad come home from climbing poles for Cass County Rural Electric Cooperative, did I imagine I would be meeting on an almost daily basis with European energy leaders pleading with us to help them meet a demand that they have and they've cut themselves off of in Russia. We have a moment to do it cleaner, greener, better, by investing more in what we do really, really well. And I, while I appreciate the, the uh, illustration of, of uh, turning albums into CDs into digital music and celebrating the oldies, quite honestly, I don't want to be the leader of a new world order. I want to be the leader of a free world order. And that's what the oil and gas industry has provided us in this country and what we are able to provide the world today. If we stop the Listen, I'm all for long-term aspirational goals. We can have a 2050 fantasy. I don't mind that. But it's being met by a 2022 reality. And we ought to step up to that reality today and, in, and enhance the opportunity. So, uh, Mr. Matheson, with regard to your testimony about rural cooperatives and co-ops not having the commercially available technologies to, to have... Um, base load electricity generation and and have it all be carbon free. There are some opportunities and 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 Senator Cardin is right and Senator Whitehouse is right and Senator Carper is right. There is a lot of bipartisan support for some, you know, innovation and technological advancement um, incentives around here. We need to do more of that. So you know, Minn Kota Electric in, in North Dakota is on the very forefront of a commercially a, 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 a commercial opportunity for carbon capture utilization and storage technologies. Um, but you also, I'm sure, know that there are some challenges to that. Could you speak to that just a little bit in how we could maybe do more to, to provide opportunities to innovate? Sure, happy to do that. And I appreciate the question. Look, it's a, a, foundationally, you have to have always available supply to maintain reliability 24-7. And I know I've said that a couple of times. <laughs> I can't say it enough. I agree with you. And so uh, we need to be thoughtful about how we talk about this in terms of a portfolio approach to all the sources of electricity generation in this country. And it's going to transition over time, but the portfolio has got to maintain reliability and affordability. And uh, you, you mentioned specifically the Minkota project. It's right. It's a commercial, a commercial size carbon capture sequestration effort at a coal-fired power plant. It's an exciting opportunity. It represents a commitment by electric co-ops to try to be part of the solution. What can Congress do? Well, uh, there's this issue of Congress often uses tax credits to incentivize these things. And we are non-for-profit electric cooperatives, so we do not benefit directly from those tax credits. Uh, uh, I would suggest whether it's renewables, whether it's carbon capture, or whatever type of tax credit Congress wants to offer, um, we and the municipal utilities are on the outside looking in, quite frankly. Yes. So if Congress wants to incent investments in these emerging new technologies, uh, I would suggest you may want to create, say, create that incentive for everyone in the electric sector 
and it's called direct pay is the term we use. It's a very popular item. It's, it, 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 I know it went through the Senate Finance Committee on a marked up bill earlier this year, excuse me, late last year. So I think there's an opportunity to help incent that investment in the electric co-op side as well. You asked for a question about what you could specifically do. That would be my number one ask. I am with you. Thank you. Yeah. And I've got five seconds. So, Ms. Gama, um, real quickly, real quickly, what can what can we do to enjoy this incredible abundance of resources that we have in a way that's both clean, but also recognizes America's leadership? We produce it here. We produce it here more cleanly than any other country. Um, you know they more greenhouse gas emissions if you import it from overseas. So just produce it here. I worry a lot about the signals being sent by the SEC this week, um, the Federal Reserve nominees and others. We, we can get into that if we do another round. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.